The power is now held by Keir Starmer. Following a conservative government that lasted for 14 years, the Labour Party has taken control of the government. However, what does this mean for renters and landlords? Should landlords be concerned? Should renters be concerned? In this video, I will walk you through the facts so that you can make your own decision. So, let's get started. For each of Labour's initiatives, I have divided them into three sections. First, what did Labour state they will do? What effect will these things have directly on the housing market? And third, my own personal opinion. So, let's get into it. I've gone through the Labour manifesto in great depth and I'll provide a link to it in the description below so that you can take a look at it for yourself. From the manifesto and what they have also publicly indicated, I've identified six important factors that I believe will have a potentially substantial impact on the property market. Number one, Labour will cap corporation tax at the current level of 25%, the lowest in the G7 for the entire parliament, and will act if tax changes in other countries pose a risk to UK competitiveness. The reason corporation tax is going to be so important to a lot of landlords is because of section 24. In short, section 24 was rolled out in 2017 and came into full effect in April 2020. What it stopped was landlords being able to deduct all of their mortgage interest as a cost, which would then reduce their tax bill. But there is a way to get around section 24, which is to buy properties through a limited company, not in your personal name. So of course, in a limited company, you instead pay corporation tax on your profits and then can choose to pay yourself through dividends or a salary essentially bypassing the effects of section 24. As you can imagine, there has been an ever-growing number of landlords setting up companies to hold buy-to-let properties, but that now makes corporation tax a key consideration for landlords. Now, of course, it sounds great that Labour are capping corporation tax at a current rate of 25%, but as you can see here, it is the highest rate we've seen since 2011. Now, Labour make the point that despite this, it's the lowest rate in the G7. Well, it is true. You can see pre the increase to 25%, it was significantly lower, and even at 25%, it's still far lower than other G7 countries. Even if you look back at our corporation tax rates since the 80s, we have seen rates far higher. Perhaps our tax rate should be in line with other G7 countries. Maybe that's why it feels like everything is falling apart. What do you think? Anyway, what effect will this have on the property market? As we all know, corporation tax affects all UK companies, not just landlords stretching their portfolio in this way, but the direct effect is it reduces the company's after-tax profits and therefore the return to company shareholders. So in effect, it's going to reduce the money that they can take as dividends or income or reinvest to grow their business by buying more buy-to-let properties. For example, my personal opinion on this is I think in general, I don't think it will have a big effect on landlords, specifically because the 25% tax rate only applies to profits above £250,000. If your profit is £50,000 or less, the rate is still 19%. Anyway, the old rate and any profit between is tapered between 19 and 25%. So I think most landlords aren't going to see significant differences to warrant exiting the market altogether. I think in general, Labour pledging that they will cap the rate at least means we've all got that stability in knowing they hopefully shouldn't increase over the next parliament. The second thing that Labour has pledged is to get Britain building again. To me, this is the big important pledge. In short, Labour want to build 1.5 million homes over the next parliament. So they want to build 1.5 million homes over the next five years. That works out at 300,000 homes a year. So it doesn't mean they'll build 300,000 homes next year. It might start at 200,000, but they they want to end at 1.5 million so look if that's achieved that would be amazing because as you can see every government this century has failed miserably at achieving the same government target of 300,000 new homes a year in fact if you go back in time you have to head all the way back to the 60s when we last saw that many homes being built despite the fact we now have a far larger population in fact you can see from the graph that the building of properties seems to have collapsed from the 80s onwards and do you want to know why margaret thatcher no disrespect to the late margaret thatcher i actually quite like her but leading up to the 80s almost a third of homes were affordable social housing, whereas now it's a fraction of that. The reason that's a problem is because social housing created a really decent alternative 
to home ownership and more importantly was a massive competitor to the buy to let property market. The moment Thatcher's government turbocharged the right to buy for social housing, allowing anyone living in social housing to buy their council housing at a reduced rate or discounted rate, that dramatically decreased the amount of council homes and at the exact same time, the government reduced the housing it was building so we just weren't building enough to replace all those homes being sold to the government. The government was basically downsizing its property portfolio, which was the biggest competitor to private landlords and at the exact same time, reduced what it was building concurrently. The reasons I'm explaining all this is because this is what triggered the downturn in house building and the skyrocketing of property prices since this was an inflection point where private landlords started becoming a bigger and bigger part of the property market and it appears Labour wants to try and reverse this so not only are Labour going to build way more homes through all the obvious ways like improving the planning system and so on but they want to deliver the biggest increase in social and affordable house building in a generation. They want to rebuild what Thatcher's government essentially sold off but importantly and I'm quoting the manifesto again here Labour will prioritise the building of new social rented homes and better protect our existing stock by reviewing the increased right to buy discounts introduced in 2012 and increasing protections on newly built social housing so again you can see Labour really trying to reverse the damage by increasing the volume of homes being built but more importantly growing and protecting the volume of social housing that helps stabilise property prices and rents in general across the market so what effects will this have on the property market and what's my opinion on it look if labor pulls this off this will be monumental for the property market we've not hit house building targets since the 60s and look where it's got us i'm conflicted in a way because morally i'm convinced this plan of increasing home building and in particular growing and protecting social housing is essential for equality across the UK. However, if Labour pull this off, it will slow house price growth and reduce rental yields, all of which is a good thing for society, but a bad thing for landlords. I really desperately hope Labour achieve this, but part of me feels convinced we're going to be let down as usual. Number three, Labour will increase stamp duty paid by non-UK residents. You may not be aware, but non-UK residents actually pay different stamp duty rates to UK based residents and investors alike. So as you can see, the left column shows standard stamp duty rates, although at the moment that 2% stamp duty has been scrapped temporarily and it's unclear if Labour will reinstate it, but you can see on the right hand side how much higher stamp duty is for non-UK residents. Labour have said they're going to increase these levels to focus on giving UK residents an even bigger advantage over overseas buyers. So what effect will this have on the property market and what's my view of it? In reality, I think this policy is a headline because although I do personally think it's a great idea, it will reduce the competition for everyone here in the UK that will help all types of UK buyers. It's not going to have as big of an effect on the overall market as I think the majority of people think it will because right now, less than 3% of London homes are owned by non-UK residents. Or companies. It's a good strategy to try and lower that to half a percent for example but I don't think it would shift the needle on housing prices overall. There are approximately 105,000 residences across England and Wales and there are 270,000 homes held by overseas owners or companies. This accounts for approximately 1% of all properties. Number four, renters reform bill which was the fourth attempt to reform private renting this was obviously unsuccessful because it was scrapped the moment that Rishi Sunak called for the election however Labour had already expressed significant concerns regarding the version of the bill that was introduced anyway instead Labour's promised a renters charter that would offer the following benefits an end to section 21 no fault evictions the right for renters to have pets the right to make reasonable alterations to a property as a renter to introduce a four month notice period for landlords and finally to bring an end to automatic evictions for rent arrears. So what effect will this have on the market? Look, it's going to make the market far better for renters, but at the same time, it's going to increase the risk to landlords. For instance, if I can't easily evict a tenant for not paying rent, that's going to increase my risk and therefore I'm going to need to increase rents to offset it. Or 
if a tenant wants to make a reasonable alteration to a property and I disagree with it and then have to reverse what they've done when they move out that adds to my cost so that's all either going to increase attendance costs or decrease landlords profits these are all sensible changes but it is of course going to make things more difficult for landlords that may then choose to exit the market. We've already been seeing this happen which is why rents have been increasing so much. However the key here is if Labour can build the homes they promise then that will help offset that anyway. So overall it's a good thing. Number five is introducing rent controls. In the past London's mayor Sadiq Khan and Manchester's mayor Andy Burnham as well as others were calling for rent freezes in some major cities. However, in June 2023, Labour completely scrapped its pledge to bring in rent controls, so I guess that could obviously change, but generally rent controls in other cities abroad have seen mixed results, and so if this is ever considered in the future, it needs to be carefully thought out. It's actually the details behind the rent controls that actually really matters to if it works or not. Assisting first-time purchasers is the sixth priority. The Labour Party released data that showed two out of three children born in 2023 won't own a home before they are 50, which I find particularly horrifying. So what Labour want to do is introduce a mortgage guarantee scheme for first-time buyers. So essentially, the government would act as a guarantor for part of your loan, which then encourages lenders to offer low deposit deals that then makes it easier for people to get onto the property ladder to begin with. Now this sort of thing already exists, where you might get a parent to act as a guarantor on your mortgage, which then reduces the risk to the lender and then means that you can usually get better interest rates, for example, helping you borrow more. So unlike the help to buy schemes in the past, which significantly helped people buy new builds, this will help first time buyers buy any property, which will really help the market in general, because even if you're not a first time buyer, it creates transactions at the bottom of the ladder that then creates the transactions up the ladder, which helps everyone who's trying to sort of upsize or downsize Size, for instance. It helps the whole property market. And finally, number seven, regulating holiday homes and short-term lets. This is a big one because the rise of Airbnb and Booking.com has dramatically increased the amount of property being used for holiday lets. Added to that, if you rent a property as a holiday let, it also bypasses a landlord's issue with section 24, as you can offset interest payments against costs on a property you own as an individual and rent as a holiday let. Specifically, you don't get that if it's a normal rental property. Labour previously mentioned they will surface a similar concept to the licensing scheme in Wales for short-term lets. So in short, in England, it would require any accommodation used for short-term lets to be registered and licensed similar to the process that exists for HMOs in many areas. Already at this stage, we don't really know the severity of any rule changes or the detail behind it. But again, anything that constrains the supply of holiday lets is going to help homeowners and landlords. I think in general here, Labour are being quite sensible about everything they're announcing. I just hope they keep their promise on those 1.5 million new homes because that is really what matters. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to like, subscribe and feel free to comment so we can continue the conversation. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.